Hello, MCU fans. Well, Deadpool and Wolverine has finally hit the Disney Plus timeline. So the question now is, why on earth was it placed where it was? Well, we have lots to discuss, so let's dive right in and see what we can find out. Don't forget we have a November contest running all month long. Be a subscriber, leave a comment, and five random winners can choose from a book or a steelbook. Best of luck. And we have a membership option with lots of cool perks, so you might check it out in case you're interested. All right, so where did the movie show up on Disney Plus? Well, in several sections, actually. It's in the MCU Multiverse Saga, which is just pretty much everything that came out during the Multiverse Saga in release order, which is why we see Echo, X Men 97, etc. It also showed up in the Mutant Legacy section, and honestly, I don't know what the order is here. Maybe it's when Disney Plus got access to show the different things, because it's not in timeline order, that's for sure. So if you know, let me know, but it's kind of crazy order. It also showed up in the MCU movie timeline, which still doesn't tell us a lot. They just put it at the end because it came out after the Marvels. But the real question is, where does it show up on the MCU complete timeline? So I did a poll on that, and as you can see, the number one answer after 1,700 votes was it won't be on the timeline at all because it's Universe 10005. And I think that makes a lot of sense to have voted that. The second most popular was between Marvels and Agatha, then somewhere in the 2024 section, and finally after Agatha all along. And several people wrote in an option of somewhere in the 2018 section, which was also a good vote. Well, you probably all know the answer by now. It's between the Marvels and Agatha all along. But why? Why was it placed there? I do think it makes a lot of sense, but we need to dive into this. So we're going to start by looking at the Deadpool timeline. And I have done extensive videos on this, so I'm not going to go into detail. I'm just going to kind of spin quickly through the timeline. Check out the other videos if you want more details. So Deadpool is between 2014 and 2016. And then I really think it's important that No Good Deed be considered canon. Of course, No Good Deed was a really short video that Ryan Reynolds put out around the time when Logan came out. And in particular, it shows that Wade Wilson is aware of the Logan movie, and most importantly, he's aware that Logan died in it. Why is that important? Well, because when Deadpool 2 comes around, which goes from 2017 to 2018, he literally references Logan dying and knows exactly how he died and where he died, and when, even, in 2029, that he died. So that's just the benefit of being a fourth wall breaker. So, it's also important, I think, to mention Once Upon a Deadpool, because, again, whether or not you think it's canon is totally up to you. Um, they haven't made it clear, but I think it works really well, because remember, when Wade goes to talk to Happy in Deadpool and Wolverine, it's to try to impress Vanessa by joining the Avengers. Well, I'm going to throw out the idea, maybe before that, he tried to impress Vanessa by kidnapping Fred Savage to convince Fred to basically say, hey, Vanessa, he's awesome. You got to love this guy. I think that would be funny. But whether or not you think it's canon, uh, definitely the last thing is Deadpool and Wolverine. And this movie spans so many different points in time. I mean, March of 2018, October of 2024 for most of the movie, and he even jumps past 2029 to see Logan's grave. So let's look quickly at that. So March of 2018, he uses Cable's device to come visit Happy. And I've had many people ask, how on earth did he jump between universes with Cable's device? The answer is, because he's Deadpool. I mean, the device should not have let you do that. But that's okay. He can do anything. <laughs> he's Deadpool. All right. Anyway, he goes to visit Earth 616, which we learn is the sacred timeline. So in other words, not one of the branched what-if timelines. And it is March 14th of 2018. Okay, great. So then the movie jumps forward six years later, uh, back in Earth 10005. And in fact, he even references that six years ago, you'd all be dead. So that's referencing the fact that half of this room would have been dead uh, back in Deadpool 2, but he saved them all. Okay, and then remember, in the movie, he uses this time the TVA's Tempad to jump, I don't know when, I mean, sometime after Logan's death and you know all his skin would have rotted off. But he just wants to make sure Logan truly is really, really dead which he is. So, okay, that's the basic timeline for Deadpool and Wolverine. So then if it's in 2018, 2024, sometime in 2029, and off in a different universe, why did it go here? We still have not answered that question, right? In fact, nothing at this point would indicate that it should be right here. But here's the key. The most important thing in where it was set up in the timeline is this statement from Paradox. When Paradox says, we used to just prune these things, simple, elegant, efficient, but I'm told the TVA doesn't like to do that anymore. So what he's referring to is the fact that once Loki's tree was created and the TVA could see everything across the multiverse, they made this decision not to prune anymore. So 
where then does Loki season two fit in the timeline? Because that's what's going to give us our answer, right? Well, Marvel put out this a season by season timeline, which is really helpful, way back in February. And notice they put Loki season two and What If season two right after the Marvels, which is really kind of odd, right? Because Loki season one and What If season one are way back before WandaVision. So what are they trying to tell us here? Well, again, I've did a, done a longer video on this that you can check out and it goes into great detail, but here's the real key. Loki season two picks up right after season one, but they're trying to tell us that basically Loki season two ran the entire course of the multiverse saga so far. So basically the loom was falling apart all throughout this time. So how something outside of time runs parallel to the MCU, again, watch my bigger video for more details. But that really answers our question because we know that Deadpool and Wolverine has to be after Loki season two, and that's why it was probably placed where it is, then Agatha all along after that. Okay, so that means basically Loki's tree was created after the Marvels, right? And then we saw it in What If, a season two. And I think that's therefore why it shows up here on the MCU complete timeline. Even though we don't see Loki season two broken out because they don't have it season by season on Disney Plus, we know that it's got to be after the Marvels because Loki season two is after the Marvels. All right, so if we look at this diagram, which kind of more shows how everything relates to each other, let's spin through phase five really quickly. You have Quantum Mania, followed by Guardians, followed by Secret Invasion, the Marvels, and then remember, Monica in the post credit scene goes somewhere. We're gonna talk more about that in a second. Then we have Loki season two, What If season two, Deadpool and Wolverine, and Agatha all along. But yeah, let's talk about this. Where did Monica go? Because I think that is really important and also helps explain why things were set up the where they were in the Disney Plus timeline. Okay, so remember, Paradox was gonna use the Time Ripper to destroy 1005. And in fact, Cassandra gets a hold of it and she destroys it all the way down to 1%. In fact, if this thing could show decimal points, it might've been 0.0001%. So she had pretty much wiped out everything. Then Deadpool and Wolverine did the impossible, right? But only they could do it together and they rebuilt the universe. As, as B15 explains, I'm gonna show you something huge. Look at this. Do you see that? Your universe is regenerating. Whatever you did here, you not only saved your world, you spared your timeline from existence. So the entire universe has now been recreated with their main timeline and then now all the new branches coming off of it. Okay, that's crazy, right? So then what happened to all the heroes? Well, Deadpool himself said, is there any way you can send them home? So we know that Blade and Elektra likely went back to their universes. However, we do see that Wolverine, the Wolverine from the movie, X-23 and Dogpool, gotta love Dogpool, they all stay in 1005. And with the deleted scene that uh, Ryan Reynolds released, it sure looks like Gambit is seeing a Marvel Sparkle Circle and being taken somewhere. So I'm gonna guess he might end up showing up in 1005 as well. So what does that mean? Does that mean there are two Wolverines? Because remember, in Days of Future Past, we had this Wolverine coming back into the future in 2023. In fact, here he is seeing everybody uh, all still alive because in, in Days of Future Past, of course, they recreated a new future. So what does it mean for this basically second recreated future? I mean, when this kid says that's Wolverine, does he say it because it's this Wolverine? or because he remembers this Wolverine. This is the one he would have seen on TV probably. In fact, for that matter, X-23 should be a little kid in 2024. So what is going on here? Well, I think the big clue is when Deadpool himself said, hey, I found your new anchor being. So basically when they recreated the universe from scratch, I think now the Wolverine from the movie is now the only Wolverine in the universe. And in fact, this is the only X-23 in the universe. Basically it's a redo <laughs> of the X-Men universe, I don't even know if the Logan movie even happened in the new recreated 1005. So what does that mean for Monica? All right, I think where Monica showed up is perhaps in 1005. Because remember, we see Beast, right? And Beast is now in a more comic accurate outfit, but he's played by the same actor. He's actually just voiced because he's CGI in the Marvels. But the point is, same voice actor, Kelsey Grammer. 
Also, when they talk about Charles asking for an update, well, Charles did come back to life again after Days of Future Past, and now with the universe being recreated once again, he can look more comic accurate in his wheelchair, etc., his outfits, his costumes, etc. And in the new recreated universe, binary is now part of that universe. So really, the sky is the limit for what they do with the X-Men when we see them again. So I think in that post credit scene, Monica Rambeau ends up in 1005. And the next time we see her, she's going to be surrounded by the rebooted X-Men now in their comic accurate outfits, and it will be glorious. I can't wait. But it does raise the question, why is Deadpool and Wolverine set in 2024 when the rest of the MCU is in 2026? Well, I think the answer is in the fact that Paradox wanted to grab Deadpool when he was at his lowest, and they chose October 2024 as the point in time to do that. Because remember, the TVA can jump anywhere on the, on the timelines, and they must have figured this is the point when it's most likely we can get him to do what we want him to do. So I hope that makes sense. Don't let the fact that it's in the timeline in the 2026 part of the MCU throw you off. It just means the TVA jumped back to October of 2024. So how did Monica get here to begin with? Well, remember, a rift in space opened up and we can see this black hole forming, and now it opens up into 1005, and really, this can be any point in time in 1005, but I'm gonna bet it's around the same time as the MCU, so it's probably around a September of 2026 in 1005, which means she showed up a good two years after that movie completed, and therefore, it's been two years since the reboot. Pretty wild, huh? So just FYI, I do have this massive diagram, which I know you can't see this if you're looking on your phone very clearly, right? It's really small. But I just want you to see, I have a timeline showing everything. So for example, here's the MCU, uh, here's the TVA and Loki, here's the X-Men, etc. cetera. Uh, so go check that out. It's on my Google Drive and I will leave a pinned comment so you can see that and you'll see how everything all fits together across the multiverse. And then one last thing to discuss. So what is the next thing to occur when we see Monica again? I think a big hint is this particular line in Deadpool and Wolverine. When, when uh, Wolverine says, I wanted to be an Avenger, but uh, screw the Avengers. <laughs> yeah, I didn't make the cut. Same with the X-Men. So he does not have a very good impression of the Avengers. Not of the X-Men either, but certainly not of the Avengers. So I think the next time we see 1005 and it ends up colliding with 616, it's setting up some type of Avengers versus X-Men battle. Now, that may be during Avengers Doomsday, so Avengers 5. It may be a separate movie. I don't know, but I really do think they're not going to miss a chance to give us one last look at those original legacy uh, actors now in comic-accurate uniforms fighting the Avengers. Let me know your thoughts on that, but I think that will be incredible. So, there you go. Now you know where Deadpool and Wolverine is in the timeline, and hopefully you know why. At least my best attempt at it. So now it's time to rewatch the movie in all its glory. So don't forget, we have that November contest where you could win a book or a steelbook, and there's that membership option in case you're interested in that. And we have a Discord. I always love to bring that up. 1,900 members across the globe, conversations 24-7, and you could be a part of it as well. Notice here we are talking about, well, Deadpool and Wolverine showing up on the timeline. So I will leave a pinned comment so you can be part of the conversation. Also, if you don't mind, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. You can check out more content, and we'll all continue to enjoy the ever-growing, the ever-changing Marvel Cinematic Universe.